Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri and the Bunurong clans of the Kulin Nation. I'd like to acknowledge any Aboriginal people here in the room. And I'd like to pay my respect to the Elders from the past, the ones that are present. And I'm here to talk to you about the way that I show my respect for the ones that are emerging. So if this is 80,000 years ago, 70,000, 60,000, 50,000, 40,000, 30,000, 20,000, 10,000, and here we are today. 10,000, 1,000, 232. About 232. 232 years of how we know this country, Australia. 232 years of colonisation, 232 years of history, law, culture, 80,000 years of history, law, L-O-R-E, law of the land, and culture. And it's the gap between here and there that motivates me to do something for the emerging elders of the Indigenous community, the kids. So I run to raise money for the Cathy Freeman Foundation. I have a found, uh, an ongoing fundraising campaign and it's called Run Bitch Run. <laughs> it's a quite a successful campaign and at this point in time we've got a whole team of run bitches run team and we run lots of different distances i love to run i'm not particularly fast but i really enjoy it i have all my life and i'm determined to keep running until the privileges that are afforded to my five kids are the same privileges that are afforded to the kids who are indigenous to this country who have been born in these 232 years. This is my son and he's packing awards on Palm Island. He's doing that for the kids to reach their fullest potential in school. This is Pilla Paletta. She is a Wemba Wemba Wagaria woman. She's an author. She's a midwife. She's a mother of six and she's the first Aboriginal hot air balloon pilot and she has bestowed upon me the name Wakatangwira, determined to run. Now why am I determined to run for these kids in remote communities to reach their fullest potential in schools? To pay the rent, basically. Am I proud to call myself Australian? No. Do I feel guilty about that? Yeah. I do. The privileges that I've been born into, I am so grateful for. But until my Aboriginal brothers and sisters receive the same privileges that I've received by being born in this amount of time in our history, I can't reconcile to call myself Australian and be proud of it. All my life I've been asked, where are you from? And I always say Melbourne. And then people say, oh no, but where were you born? And I say, Frankston. <laughs> <laughs> and people say, oh no, where are you really born? Where are you really from? And for white friends out there that say that to people of colour, that's actually a microaggression. It's, it's offensive. If you don't know what a microaggression is, Google it. But then I answer, oh, do you mean my heritage? And people say, yes, yes, your heritage. Where are you from? Where's, where's your ancestors from? And I say, all these countries of my bloodlines. But I always end with, I'm Australian. But as I've grown up, I've become more and more uncomfortable with calling myself Australian. 
Now, when I signed up for the marathon, it was the online registration form that said, do you want to fundraise? And I was like, yeah, cool, I'll do that. And there was a list of charities and the Kathy Freeman Foundation came out. I was like, yes, I love Kathy, sure, tick. But in that moment, I just had this incredible, intense flashback. It was, it was like, it was a PTSD trigger, actually. And pain that is not transformed is transferred. So I sat down and I just started writing and this poem, Run Bitch Run, came out. And then I decided to shoot it and upload it onto YouTube and I used it to raise money for my first race and it raised a lot of money, it sort of went a little bit viral and that was great. But it was around this time also, about five years ago, that I made this huge self-discovery. I realised that I'm not white. Now, to the naked eye, that might have been surmised in moments, but for myself, born in a colonised Western culture, the only Commonwealth country that does not acknowledge its First Nations people in the Constitution, I've been colonised to think, see, speak, act, white. It was the course of these 232 years that created a mainstream culture that centres whiteness. Meet Duan. He's 10 years old. He's a healer and he speaks two Aboriginal languages. It's about the history of our country. <coughs> he claimed for the English country the whole of this new land. What happened at school? The history that we told at school, that was for white people. That clip is taken from a doco called In My Blood It Runs. It's released this month and it's directed and created by May and Newell. And it follows Duan's family and his journey as an Australian and as an Aborigine dealing with institutionalised racism and intergenerational trauma. Our institutions create huge barriers for our Aboriginal kids. I do believe that knowledge is power. And I do believe education can equip our Aboriginal kids to become leaders in their community and also leaders in our country. And what better way to lead our nation into a brighter future? In the Closing the Gap report that came out just a fortnight ago, we're on track for only two of our seven targets. And that is the level of enrolments of four-year-olds in early childhood education. And we're on track to halve the gap for the number of year 12 attainments for 2025. Now, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people make up only 2% of our population but they also constitute 27% of our prison population. And right now, 100% of the kids in our juvenile justice detention system in the Northern Territory are Aboriginal kids. And this is how we treat our kids in the juvenile justice system. Pain that is not transformed is transferred. There is so much intergenerational healing to be done for non-Indigenous and Indigenous Australians before we can sing in joyful strains with one voice. Twelve years ago when Kevin 07 said sorry, he also appealed for all of us to take intergenerational responsibility for our blemished history. And I thought, what can I do? I can move to change lives. Sport is a commodity and it's a privilege that's accessible to me and it's something all Australians understand. It's also a great platform to highlight the racism in our culture. Even if we're acknowledged 50 years posthumously. This is Peter Norman. Google him if you don't know who he is. In 2017, the Uluru Statement came out and it speaks of Makarata, which is the coming together after the struggle. Makarata is a Yolngu word for 
conflict resolution, peacemaking, justice. And I thought, how can I create Makarata in my life? My family live on Wadawurrung country. This is Corinna Eccles and her family is the only remaining Wadawurrung bloodline. Her great, great, great grandmother is Queen Mary. She's from the lineage of royalty. Corinna's dad and his four siblings were stolen from their mother, Corinna's grandmother. Aunty Joyce, who's 95 years old. It was the half-caste act that was passed by Alfred Deacon that made that possible. And, that and Corinna lives with the legacy through Deakin University being built on water on country. However, she also lives with five generations of her family on what on country today. This is Corinna three years ago at my wedding and apart from my husband, she was the most important person there for me because she participated in every part of the ceremony. And at the end of the ceremony, she asked myself and my husband and the kids to take a handful of sand and put it in the vase and then she gave the vase back to us and her family welcomed my family on country. And it was the first time that I called Australia home. And so I ask you, what privileges, what power do you have through being born in this period of time that you can use to pay the rent? On my shoes and out the door, limber, connected, feet ready to ride the bitumen serpent that glides past the primary school, the secondary school, the soccer field, the athletics track and around past that haunted homestead out back to my front door. It was 1994. I was a pubescent girl still living at home and my brother, the absent man of the house, was home from university. It was my ritual of freedom, it was just an afternoon jog, and I moved with genetic grace. The ease of the line of the thousands that toil the earth before me of rice and spices. I ran, I was in flow. Ha <laughs> ha, look at the abo, you black bitch! I turned my head, locks of convicts flowing red crimson waves. Ha <laughs> ha, look at the abo, run! Hey, run, bitch, run! Run home. Running home was what my heart said. I looked ahead. She fell behind with a boy and a bike much younger to my mind. Flight of adrenaline accelerated my step. I felt the pulsation of my awareness expand my peripheral. Time slowed down and I sped ahead. Ha <laughs> ha! Look at that abo run. Hey, there's Kathy Freeman. Hey, run, Kathy, run. Run, bitch, run. She just called me Kathy. Now, it wasn't fashionable to be called Aboriginal, but I'd been called black my whole life. Abo, nigger, brownie, slant-eyed bitch, you've been kept in the oven too long. But this red freckled sister on her rampage of hate had no idea of the gift that she just gave to me. Like this twisted hand of destiny, she just called me Kathy. Now run, bitch, run means the world to me. Run home, run home was what my heart said to me. But she just called me Kathy. Kathy Freeman. The woman who had already won three gold medals in the Commonwealth Games, a woman who symbolised peace and hope and reconciliation for Australia's tainted history. Now run, bitch, run means the world to me. Run home, running home was what my heart said to me. Run, bitch, run, red girl's racism ignited my fire. Run, bitch, run just became my mantra. You want Kathy? Well, let's see if these steel springs are gonna hurtle me down the track. I increased my step as fast as a lead, but she pursued her poison tongue licking at my Achilles, fueled with the ignorance of her lineage. Righteousness and her pastel pigmentation. I looked ahead. The rainbow serpent was taking me home. Run, bitch, run. She followed me straight to my door with her little sidekick in tow. My brother, the size of a Samoan mountain, is inside. <sighs> Redhead, chase me. Call me black over, bitch. My brother flew out the door with our bull terrier in tow. That girl was not going to bother me anymore. Run, bitch, run. It was 1968 when Uncle Joe immigrated. He's a Chinese Pakistani. It took him one year to get our family through the white Australia policy. See, it took him appealing to the local parish priest, 
who appealed to the local member of parliament of the Liberal Party. And like another twister hand of destiny, he was the one that sponsored the entire Leo family. See, Ron Bitch Run, that's how I came to be. I'm the first Australian of my blood, but I'm not Aborigine. But I was born on Bunurong country, and I've got salt water in my veins. See, Ron Bitch Run, I was born at the gateway of the peninsula, where Mozart plays for ice addicts waiting for trains. Frankston, where I saw my first gun, penis, and syringe before I got my pen license. Run, bitch, run, fast forward seven years and I'm living the dream. I'm a working actor living in St Kilda and it's the year 2000. And there she is on my TV screen, Kathy Freeman. She's all dressed in green and it's the Olympics and it takes 49.13 seconds and Terra Nullius changes again and I cry my first bittersweet patriotic tear. I didn't hear, I felt people. I, ugh. The, the, my bones are still rattling. They're still, they're still rattling. The vibes in the air that night were just phenomenal. It basically elevated me off the ground. That's the sensation I was getting, as if I was getting swept up. Now Ron Bitch Run means the world to me. I've run wee 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 all the way home, and here is where it's led me to be. Here with you, home finally free. I'm Mama Boho with a blended family. My name is Liu Fi Chin, Wakatang Wira, Edge Walker, Janelle Da Silva. My children were born on Bunurong, Wadarong and Wurundjeri country. Their father has red hair and freckles. <laughs> the locks of convicts in the roots of their family tree. My children's blood runs true blue with the dreams of the, Ch the Chinese refugees escaping borders and crossing to India, to Pakistan, changing their names, their birthdays, their religions for survival. Run, bitch, run. I'm running home free from denial. I know I come from bound feet. I know I've swum through the semen of the salty, sweaty sailors and the colonial rapists and pillagers. I know my bones have been fashioned from the ashen waters of the Ganges. But run, bitch, run. Now I run for the kids of the Galawinku, Warabinda, Warameanda, and Palm Island. For the next seven generations, I'm paying it forward. Run, bitch, run, it means the world to me. I've run all the way home. Much respect, ancestors, and to the ancestors of this land. May your song lines run free with me.